Hi class, this video I will show you how to start our DVC Jupyter Notebook Hub. So in every lab exercise or homework assignment, you will see a link to tell you say click the following link to access your lab exercise or homework assignment. So if you click on this link, it will direct you to log into the DVC Jupyter Notebook Hub. Okay, so when you go here, so this one actually I do have the link to show you. Uh, so you can just go through the link. Uh, let me enlarge this one. So here's our the link. So that will be the DVC Cloud Bank to I2C Cloud. So this link I already provide you on the course syllabus as well. So when you log in, uh, the first time you log in, you only need to choose on one time. So when you click on log in, they will have the option for you to choose. Since you need to log in with your inside information, we use Microsoft. So please make sure when you click log in, you will choose the Microsoft. So then they will, they will prompt to you that your inside log in. You just need to use your DVC email and the password to log in. So now I click uh, because I already set it up earlier. So that's why they didn't ask me for the information since I already logged in earlier. So the first time if you log in, please make sure choose your Microsoft and log in your DVC email on uh, inside credential. Okay, so after you log in, you can see here. Uh, so then what they will direct you because earlier we used the lab one to um log in. So that's why they will show you the lab one on uh, Jupyter Notebook. So then you can continue to work on your homework assignment. Okay. So sometimes, like we say, here is how you work on your homework assignment. But sometimes you also want to create your own notebook to do some practice about the Python program. If you want to do that, you see, you just need to create a new one. So you go to the file, um, go to the new notebook. So then they can create a new notebook for you. Okay. So here, let me show you also. You can see because everyone, when you log in, you have your own user name and under that you have your own directory. So this thing, so everything you create that they will under your directory. So you don't need to worry about that. So on the other hand, if you want to see all the file you have, uh, you can just come to the browser, the address here. So after your user, uh, that's your login name. For me, it's Nora um, LLO at dvc.edu. So that's why in here is our main directory on uh, the material SP22. So you can go here. So they will bring you to your top level for your directory. So earlier we work on the lab. So you can go to the lab directory and the lab zero. Okay, so that's why earlier the new file I create is here. Okay, so let's continue with this new file. So then we can do some practice and about our Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so the Jupyter Notebook actually is very easy to use. Uh, so that's why here, each one like this, we call cell. So you can try to insert more cell. So each cell, you can just like practice the regular um, Python code, or you just do some calculation. So then uh, the enter doesn't do anything, they just enter. So after you do that, you can just click run. You see, they give you the result. Okay. So here, uh, I want to show you, of course, this course, we want to show you some Python programming. Okay. Okay. In this video, we want to show you some Python program and how to run some data processing. Okay. I know here, a big block code, you will feel very intimidating. But don't worry about that. You just think about that. It's just set up the data science environment. Okay. So for this course, like we say, your programming experience is not a requirement. So we will, um, in the future lecture, we will try to explain as much as we can. But some, since that's not really a programming courses, so some detail we won't get it over. So we just want you to copy and paste. Here, just make sure you in, you make your data science environment ready, your Python environment ready, so we can process our data. 
So even you copy over, don't forget each cell you have the Python code that you need to run. Okay, so then we import the library. So the following one, we want to process the content about the two books. Right, you need to quickly to read two book. So I didn't, I won't ask you to read the book. So actually we let the computer to read the book for us. So we have two book online we will access. So one is the Huckleberry Finn. The other one is the Little Woman. So you can see we have their URL uh, on the internet we can access. So then also we can process that data. So we put that in the text. So then we will have each chapter information into the chapter information. So the same thing here, that's wrong. Okay, so you see nothing happened. That's because you didn't display anything. So they just run the program. So you can see here, for example, we have the Hangul Fin chapter. So this one actually just the chapter content, we have that. If we want to run this, um, this variable name, you see when you run, they just give you all the information about the, just the plain text. Okay, so one thing is, I don't ask you to read the whole text, the whole book, but computer can read for us, right? So we can have some information we can get from the book. So then we can process that. So that's all the information. So how about I just want to list the chapter information. Okay, so that's why here, uh, all we were using the table, we create the table. So then we have all the columns just from our Huckleberry Finn chapters, but here just list all the chapter. Okay, so then the same thing here, the Python code when we run. Okay, then you will see here, yeah, we have all the chapter information list here only. Okay. So then here, since we want to read book, right? So we know this book, actually they talk about Tom a lot. They talk about Jim a lot. But do you want to know how many times Tom being show in this book? Yeah, so the same thing, uh, using our NumPy. Okay, so we can count in this book chapter, okay, how many times the character Tom being showing. Okay, so you can see here if we want to see each chapter, how many times Tom being showing each chapter. So you can see, oh, the first three chapters he show a lot, but then later on he didn't have so many things. So then, yeah, we have that. So then we have some main character. We have Tom, we have Jin. So then we can see, oh, Jin actually, the first beginning they didn't show a lot. But then, kind of, the first few chapters afterward, he being he being shown in the book a lot. Okay, so if you want to compare all the characters show in different chapter, so you see, our computer help us to calculate all the chapter how many times they've been shown. So the same thing, if we want to see the table, not clear enough, right? So how about we put that in a chart? Okay, so we can plot this chart. Okay, so in different chapter, so then you can see different characters, they've been showed um, different times. So earlier we're using a number in displaying the table. We can see some pattern, but if you visualize that, don't you see? Oh, then we can see actually Jin maybe is the main character. Even, yeah, honestly, I never read this book. But then from this information, uh, I can see that. And also since we, even we see, yeah, maybe Jin and the Hunk, they, at the first 30 chapter, they are kind of similar. And also they, uh, in the later 20 chapter, they have the same frequency display. So we will guess maybe they have some relationship in this book. Okay, so then, yeah, we don't know about that, but that's the, uh, the visualization can help us to see. Okay, so the same thing we can apply on our Little Woman chapter. So you can see the same thing here. Oh, we give you the sample code. 
but make sure it won't see the output until you run about that. Okay, so then we have the chapter from the little woman. And also in little woman, you know that talk about four sisters. Uh, so their um, relationship in the family. Okay, so here we have the Amy, Beth, Joe, and Mac. So Lori actually is the neighbor boy. Okay, so after we got those five important characters, so then the same thing. Yeah, how about we make that in plot in a diagram? Okay, so then you can see Joe show many times more than other characters. So we can guess Joe will be the main character. Okay, so then like earlier we say, uh, Lori actually is the neighbor boy. He married one of the sisters. So will you try to guess who he married to? Okay, yeah, so you can think about that. So of course, like I say, I watched the movie or TV before about little woman, but I didn't know the, I didn't read the book. Okay, but then here, I will, maybe for me, I will try to guess because then we will say if they married, right? So maybe the couple will have the similar pattern on the show, the frequency show in the book. So then we can guess. Yeah, of course, now you can guess. For me, I will guess either Amy or Beth. Okay, so you can see, since we say they get married, right? If this book is talk about the story from beginning to the end, since their childhood and after they grow up. So then you can see maybe on um, the Lori and the Amy, they got the married after the chapter 35, because we can see the pattern is very similar. Uh, so when the, the frequency they show. Okay, so from those examples, actually we want to show you is uh, we're using the statistic knowledge. But one thing we use the Python program to help us to process the data easier. Okay, so that's one example. You can, even if you don't read the book yourself, we can have the computer to read the book for us. So we can analyze the information according to the character. Okay, so then the next example, the same thing we want to do some um, analysis for these two books. So then how about we talk about this book. We want to see each chapter, how many are the lengths for each chapter. Okay, then we also can do is, we want to know for average each sentence has how many characters. Okay, so then here uh, actually is what we want to run to read the textbook to find the length. So then here in each chapter, uh, we count the number of all the characters. Okay, so that will be the length for the chapter. So then if we can see the period, okay, so the period, the note, uh, to note, that means the full sentence finish, right? So then if we're using the count of the number of all characters in the chapter, divide by how many periods, we kind of know the length of the sentence. Okay, so that's the example we'll see here. Okay, the same thing. Uh, so you can see that's the length for each chapter and how many periods for the Hunkberry thing. So then for the little woman, you can see here, uh, if we compare these two tables, Oh, we can see the little woman actually each chapter is much bigger than the little woman okay but then if we try to divide uh, the length to the period so we can see the average sentence uh, so then you can see here so then we try okay so here is our plot okay so here the x-axis is number of period in the chapter so then the y-axis is the number of characters in each chapter. So even the yellow dot, the little woman have much bigger chapter than the Huckleberry thing. But you can see their slope is almost kind of the same. It's about between 100 to 150. So actually that's kind of average sentence we have. Okay. So this video we want to show you how to use the Jubik Hub to work on your homework assignment. So make sure each cell you need to run. So then at the end, you can download as a PDF file 
to submit your homework assignment for grading.